Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Today I would like to discuss the avant-garde black metal band Psy. Psy formed in Tokyo, Japan in 1989. They put out 12 full-length albums and they're still around to this day. So I own several other albums and usually I don't like talking on the channel about albums I don't own. But I'm going to give this a go, just uh, a quick ranking from 12 to 1 and looking at the albums I do have in a little bit more detail. So my number 12 is Hangman's Hymn, the seventh album from 2007. Many people think this is one of the band's strongest releases, but for me, it was a style change in a way I didn't like. They became much more orchestral, symphonic, classically influenced, and a little less weird. Reminded me quite a bit of Demi Borgir, Death Cult Armageddon. The symphonic parts quite uh, reminded me of that. But I was never a big fan of this album. The two songs I think are best are Overture and Devil's Arms. Hair to Despair comes in at number 11th. That is their 11th album from 2018. And I don't have a real major complaint about this one. I just find it playing it safe, even though definitely weird compared to most albums you're going to hear. Nothing really grabs me. And uh, I find it one of the more boring releases from Psy. I should mention that uh, I would like to own all these albums, but several of these albums are out of print, or if not out of print, extremely expensive to get your hands on. But uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, number 10, Infidel Art, the second full-length album from 1995. I definitely prefer the debut album to this one. Um, yeah, I don't find it any more interesting than the debut, even though generally size progressively gotten a little bit weirder, at least to a certain point. My two favorite tracks on there are The Zombie Terror and beyond centuries my number nine is probably another uh, unpopular pick that being scenes from hell scenes from hell has a lot in common with the preceding album and my last place album hangman's hymn leaning in the orchestral direction but this one's much more uh violent and disturbing and and weirder overall, kind of bringing it back to what size all about. My number eight. This is the first CD we're going to look at. That being Grave Word, the 10th album from 2015. I read some things out there that uh, a lot of people think this is the worst Psy album. And that it's basically taking everything Psy has done to this point. And instead of having like a series of parts that are very different, it's just everything they've done blended together and coming out as one strange sound. Overall, I do like it, but my main complaint is several songs on here have these very annoying vocal parts that kind of sound like, uh, well, I heard some people say like, you know, Jim Henson, like Muppets. I was more thinking it sounds like, uh, what's his name? Uh, kind of Tim Burton expired. That, that's how some of these uh, vocals strike me. But what are my favorite songs on here? I'd say The Molesters of My Soul is definitely the best track on here. Um... The Casket Burner is kind of a cool, straightforward track. And I also like the Forlorn, although that definitely has many of those annoying vocal parts that I spoke of already. Number seven, this is In Somnophobia, the ninth album from 2012. I bought this album when it came out, and I didn't really like it at first, but... During recent years, it's definitely grown on me. My favorite tracks on here have got to be 
equal and amnesia. Before we get into the top six, the top half of the discography, uh, in terms of odds and ends from Psy, the only thing I own at this point is Live, The Eastern Forces of Evil from 2022. It's got both a CD and a DVD of the performance with three music videos attached. The sound and performances are all pretty good on here, but I'm not crazy about the uh, track listing. A lot of these songs are from the albums that aren't my favorites, but my favorite track on here is probably Mayanaka no Kali from the most recent album, Shiki. Number six, Shiki, the 12th and most recent album from 2022. This came out on Peaceville. And I think this is their best album since Gallows Gallery in 2005. My favorite tracks on here are Mayanaka, No Kai, and probably my number one is Fuyu Gakuru. A couple things I know about this one is lots of great guitar soloing all over the place, and uh, a really nice Eastern feel to some of these songs, despite Sai being from Japan and some of their uh, their imagery. Not too much of their music is eastern sounding and i thought it was done to a great effect on this album i also noticed that the uh instrumental closer tuji noasa definitely reminded me of despite being a an instrumental piece like mid-era swans like soundtracks for the blind or uh the great annihilator or something like that Number five, I'm going to go with Scorn Defeat, the debut album from 1993. This is a re-release on Peaceville, but this was originally released on uh, Death Like Silence Productions, Euronymous from Mayhem's old label. This also comes with a bonus disc of demos and covers, but uh, we're not talking about that right now. The, the covers are mostly... There's uh, Evil Dead by Death and several Venom covers. And throughout Psy's career, Venom covers are definitely a mainstay. But back to the album, Scorn and Defeat. I got to go with The Nell. Despite this being the early 90s all the way out in Japan, this has the feel of the classic old second wave Norwegian bands. Maybe something like I guess my closest comparison would probably be Old Satyricon. I also really like the heavy Celtic Frost worship in Ready for the Final War and Taste Defeat. Okay, number four, Gallows Gallery. This is the sixth album from 2005 and to my estimation, a very underrated album. I think a lot of people put this kind of near the bottom, and I don't understand why. Despite their uh, brief flirtation with uh, you know, a major underground label such as Century Media, this album is actually put out on Baphomet Records, which I believe was the record label of Killjoy from Necrophagia. I should also mention that there's been many criticisms of this album's sound, not that I agree with that, and it has been re-released. Um, I forget if it was re-recorded or remastered or whatever, but it's got the same album cover, but more uh, blue than red. So back to this album. I find it's a bit of a return of sorts to traditional metal, 70s and 80s metal, with lots of synthesizer added in my favorite tracks are probably the first two pale monument and in a drowse definitely a big fan as well of the tranquilizer song and i totally forgot about 
the unnamed closer. It's just this uh, ringing sound that I believe was apparently used in World War II as like a form of audio torture to capture prisoners or something. And uh, again, a very underrated album by this band. So Gallows Gallery, number four. Number three, Imaginary Sonicscape, the fifth album from 2001 and their one and only album on Century Media. A lot of people consider this their best album, and it's definitely up there, as you can see. I got it at number three. Um, right away, the first track on here, Corpse Cry, Angel Fall, reminds me of, well, a song we're going to talk about later. But, uh, just, uh, black metal through a Iron Maiden filter with tons of psychedelic keyboards. Just a total banger of a song. And I really wish Psy would make a whole album of, of songs like that. Just the classic triumphant metal with their own weirdness thrown in there. They only have a couple tracks like that, but I wish they do more. Besides that, I really like Sunset Song, Slaughter Garden Suite, and uh, Bring Back the Dead. Great album, and definitely the most psychedelic, probably the most kind of drug-influenced album. Just the, uh, kind of tells you all you need to know right there. I think just, the band was kind of into mushrooms and psychedelics, more so during this era. And a classic album to this day. Number two, Hail Horror Hail, the third album from 1997, and the first Psy album, I ever bought. I remember back in 97, 98, there was an article in Metal Maniacs magazine talking about experimental metal. And I read about this and I said, I have got to hear it. And I found it at a used store a year or so later. And it uh, totally blew my mind and has never left my rotation 25 years later. A lot of people talk about the pretentious warning label at the back. This album is way beyond the conceived notion of how metal or music should be. In essence, it is a movie without pictures, a celluloid, phantasmagoria, accordingly the film jumps, and another scene seemingly unconnected with the previous context is suddenly inserted in between frames. Every sound on this album is deliberate, and if you find that some parts of this album are strange, it isn't because the music itself, sorry, the music is in itself strange, but because your conscious self is ill-equipped to comprehend the sounds produced on this recording. And they aren't lying. This is an extremely weird album. Got to talk about the first song here, Hail Horror Hail. I would imagine that is one of the most popular Psy songs. Just a classic 70s or 80s style metal song. Sounds like it's right out of a, an action movie. The guitar solo, to this day, one of my favorite guitar solos ever. Kind of a uplifting song at first, despite the very uh, morbid lyrics. And again, this is the first album where Psy really got experimental. Uh, these kind of loungy saxophone parts. Um Music that sounds like it came out like a spy movie. The sound of uh, dogs uh, like crying. Some very scary parts like on the song 12 Souls. This is an album you got to hear. And I don't think it's on Spotify right now, but I'm sure you can hear it on YouTube or whatever. And this came out on Cacophonous back in 97. So, my number one album is another album I don't own. That is Scenario 4, Dread Dreams, the fourth album from 1999. 
The thing I like the most about this is that the metal parts stand on their own. But all the weird parts aren't just part of being, you know, a weird song. All these parts are really cool in their own right. Everything from the country music that leads into like a flamenco part in Black Curse. The opener, Diabolic Suicide, has like weird carnival circus music. Iconoclasm in the fourth desert has a really cool Thin Lizzy part. And like Hail Horror Hail before this, lots of uh, creepy, scary parts. So I think that is another album that I think fans underrate. But that is my personal number one album, Scenario 4 Dread Dreams. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.